in the last video we discussed vedic literature and also the origin of the Ved vedic people that is aryans origin of the aryans or homeland of the aryans now we are going to discuss the extent of the vedic age later vedic age and early vedic age here we are going to discuss early vedic age and also later vedic age how they extended <clears throat> here to understand this there are some areas to discuss one is extent second one is social conditions third one is uh, religion of that period economy economy of that period and political conditions of that period that is polity of that period if we understood all these things will complete the vedic age going to the each and every topic comparison with early vedic age and the later vedic age early vedic age how far they extended and later vedic age how far they extended what were the social conditions of the early vedic age and what were the social conditions of the later vedic age and what is the religion of early vedic age and later vedic age like that economy like that polity political conditions so we can go in any form or any order first early vedic age extension of the early vedic age early vedic age is also called as rigvedic age because rigveda composed of that period this is ancient india map forget about the present political india vindya satpura ranges divides to north india and south india extent of the early vedic period early vedic people they lived at sapta sindhu according to the ac das they settled at sapta sindhu this was accepted by the many historians what is sapta sindhu sapta sindhu is flowing area of seven rivers saraswati indus and five tributaries of the indus chinab jhelum ravi bias and satlej 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven rivers the flowing area of seven rivers is called as sapta sindhu sapta sindhu is this area that means so from indus region to the yamuna the area between indus river and yamuna river that is also called as indus plains so this area the boundaries of this area coming to the point of the boundaries of this area northern boundary was jammu and kashmir eastern boundary was uh, yamuna river and the southern boundary was uh, vindhya satpura ranges western boundary was afghanistan so they did not cross this boundaries they did not mention yamuna river they did not mention even the satpura region and also afghanistan and jammu and kashmir these places were not crossed the sapta sindhu is also mentioned as a brahmavarta brahmavarta the area brahmavarta is presently called as the north india north western india north india north western india brahmavarta brahmavarta is called as the land of holy people or the land of the divine people so early vedic people they lived in the brahmavarta region or that is also called as sapta sindhu bounded between the jammu kashmir yamuna vindhya and afghanistan regions during this period they extended or they spread their culture 
in that area. They developed the culture of the early Vedic case developed in the Sapta Sindhu. Whereas coming to the point of the latter Vedic period, Vaideha Madhava, Vaideha Madhava, he was a saint, a Rishi. This Vaideha Madhava Rishi, he extended, that means he brought the Vedic culture to the east. That means they moved from Yamuna to the Gangetic Valley. They moved to the east. They started the establishment of their culture in the Gangetic Valley, especially Middle Gangetic Valley. Later Vedic period, they settled at Middle, middle Gangetic Valley. Middle, middle Gangetic Valley present to Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and that areas. Ganga Plains, they are very fertile. People move towards that side. And also, I already, we already discussed in the last videos, like uh, whenever we are going from west to the east, uh, the rainfall would be increases, increasing of the rainfall. And also increase of the fertility of the land from going to the west to the east. That's why always humankind, they move from west to east here itself. So, later Vedic people, they settled at Middle Gangetic Valley. This Middle Gangetic Valley is called as Aryavarta. Brahmavarta to Aryavarta. This area is called as Aryavarta. And during the latter Vedic period, Agastya Muni, Agastya Muni, another saint, Agastya Muni, he spread Vedic culture to the South India. So, Vedic culture spread to the South India, Vedic culture spread to the East, spread to the East by Vaideha Madhava and spread to the South by the Agastya Muni. Latter Vedic people, mostly they lived in this area. They developed their culture in this area. Rigveda composed here. Remaining Yajurveda, Samaveda, Adharva Veda. Remaining three Vedas and Vedic other Vedic literature has been developed in this area. So that's why early Vedic people lived in the Sapta Sindhu. Later Vedic period people lived in the Aryavarta. Middle Gangetic Valley. That was the extent of the people, early Vedic and later Vedic. Now coming to the point of social conditions or society of the early Vedic period and the later Vedic period. Society of early Vedic period. First take, we will take early Vedic society. Early Vedic people were the Aryans. Arya means Aryan. This word originated from the Sanskrit word Arya. Arya means respectable or superior. Arya means superior. Superior personality. And who were the people before the Aryans came to India? Aryans were the foreigners. Already we discussed that. Aryans, they were the foreigners. They came to India as invaders. Before the Aryans, who were the original Hin Indians? The original Indians, before the Aryans, the original Indians were the Indus people. Is it right? Indus people. So, what Indus people called as? Indus people, they called as Dasus or Dasyus. Dasus or Dasyus. These were the indigenous Indian people. Indigenous Indus pe Indian people. Aryans are white in color. They were white in color. These were brown in color. These were also called as Dravidians. In that society, both Aryans and non-Aryans both were lived. In the society, Aryans also lived. These were called as Dasus or Dasus were called as non-Aryans. Both were lived in the society. 
Aryans and non-Aryans both uh, they fought each other. They recorded war between the Aryans and non-Aryans. So after this, society of this period, the society of Indus, sorry, Aryan is tribal society because people were the tribal people, tribal society. Indus people lived in the cities and towns, but uh, Aryans they lived in the villages as a tribes, tribal society. The society was the tribal society of this period. Indigenous Indians, non-Aryans, they lost their towns and cities, might be they moved towards the South India. South Indians were called as Dravidians, according to some historians. Society based on the family system. Family system has been existed of that period. Family is a basic unit of the society. They followed a marriage system also. Head of the family. Father was head of the family here. That's why this society is considered as patriarchal society. Patriarchal society. Aryan society started the patriarchal society. Male, senior male would be the owner or senior male will be the owner of the family. Our senior male will give all the guidance. Everybody will listen the words of the senior male. They would give respect to the senior male. So, senior male dominated the family that is patriarchal family. Eldest son is called as Jesta. Eldest son called as Jesta. Jesta means successor. After the father, the next everything would be in the hands of the eldest son that is Jesta. Called as successor. Next to the son, successor, eldest son. <coughs> Marriage was became sacrament of this period. Marriage sacrament. Head of the family is also called as the Dampat. Head of the family is also called as Dampat. Father. Always people should listen the words of the father. Father would give punishments as well as would give the love also. There is one story in the Rig Veda. One boy did not listen the words of the father and he habituated for the bad habits. Because of that, father gave punishment to that boy, removed the tongue from the mouth. That punishment was given to the son by the father. This story existed in Vedic age, mentioned in the Rig Veda. So that's why we can understand father is main owner and also dominated for person of the family. Along with this, coming to the point of the marriage, intervarna marriages also accepted. Intervarna marriages, one varna to the another varna, these were allowed. There are four varnas, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaisya, Sudra. So among these four varnas, there occurred some intervarna, Brahmana, Kshatriya, or Vaisya, Kshatriya, or Sudra, Kshatriya, like that. Too. Intervarna marriages were also existed, but not prominent, but not too frequent. They were very rare of that period. During this period, widows were also accepted to get marriage. Widow remarriage was there, but not much common in some conditions like a yoga system in the yoga system if a girl lost his uh, husband without issues she can marry any one of the male of that family for the purpose of the getting children that is successor 
that was called as niyoga system coming to the point of the position of women of this period the position of women position of women was very respectable women enjoyed complete freedom women enjoyed complete freedom, freedom along with the men and some women they also composed vedas they also participated in the religious ceremonies women allowed to participate in the religious ceremonies except funeral rites of the father they should not allowed for the funeral rites of the father that was one thing gargi lopa mudra gargi lopa mudra viswavara maitreyi different women they were very famous of that period anupama like different women they were they became very pro very popular of that period and they composed they learnt vedic hymns and also they composed vedic hymns they composed the vedas they wrote commentaries on the vedas for example gargi gargi did not get married gargi she did not get married and finally she attained the status of rishi rishi great wise man and also guru everybody should follow the rishis that was one status highest status of the sages when sages should attain the status of the rishi she should he should have all the uh, what is that knowledge knowledge over the vedas and also uh, he should gain some boons from from the god like that having different uh, uh, higher position rishi is the higher position in the sages like that you can understand and coming through that society coming to that society society was very good no social evils of that period no social evils of that period like a caste system no caste system caste system was not existed untouchability they did not followed untouchability absence of untouchability option absent of dowry system absence of child marriages absent absent of child marriages marriage only after the puberty and girl also have uh, selection of the husband girl they have the right to selection of the husband and also there are some places going to conduct swayamvara choosing husband swayamvara was also continued this period parda system was not existed no parda system absence of parda system absence of practice of sati sati was an, also not there in this period divas was absent divas also absent no divas was uh, existed beggars who ways earners who we cannot find beggars we cannot find ways earners that's why swami dayananda saraswati he used to say that go back to the vedas vedic society is very pure egalitarian very great society what we have once you go to the vedic society so this is early vedic society early vedic society comparing with the later vedic society coming to the point of the later vedic society later vedic period in the later vedic period there existed or there occurred so many changes in the society several changes were occurred in the society like uh, it undergone different changes varna system became very prominent varna system became very strong brahmana kshatriya vaisya sudra brahmans they were the priestly class kshatriyas warriors kshatriyas were the warriors vaisyas 
మర్చెంట్ క్లాస్ శూద్ర సర్వెన్స్ ఆఫ్ అబో ఆల్ సర్వెన్స్ ఆఫ్ అబో ఆల్ దీస్ ఫోర్ ఫోల్డ్ వర్ణ సిస్టమ్ ఫోర్ ఫోల్డ్ వర్ణ సిస్టమ్ బికేమ్ వెరీ స్ట్రాంగ్ ఇన్ ద లాటర్ వేదిక్ పీరియడ్ బ్రాహ్మణ్స్ దే గాట్ హయ్యర్ పొజిషన్ ఇన్ ద సొసైటీ దే ఫాలోడ్ ద రిచువల్స్ అండ్ బ్రాహ్మణ్స్ దే ఇన్స్టిగేటెడ్ దే వట్ ఈస్ దట్ ఇన్కల్కేటెడ్ రిచువలిస్టిక్ వర్షిప్ ఇన్ ద మైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ ది పీపుల్ అండ్ దెర్ ఈస్ వన్ కాన్సెప్ట్ బ్రాహ్మిన్స్ దే ఎమర్జ్డ్ ఆర్ ఒరిజినేటెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది క్రియేటర్ క్రియేటర్ ఈజ్ కాల్ ఎస్ ప్రజాపతి ప్రజాపతి ఈజ్ ఎ క్రియేటర్ ప్రజాపతి ఈజ్ ఎ గాడ్ ప్రజాపతి ఈజ్ ఎ బ్రహ్మ ఈక్వల్ టు ద బ్రహ్మ బ్రాహ్మిన్స్ దే ఆర్ ఎమర్జ్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్రజాపతి Chetriyas from the shoulders of the Prajapati, shoulders. And Vaishyas, they emerged from the thighs of the Prajapati. Sudras from foot of the Prajapati. That's why Sudras were lower origin in the society. They considered as a servants. They have to give service for the all Vaishya, Chetriya, Brahmins. Sometimes so, they won't get any profit. or they won't get any ways so this society that means discrimination started in the society caste discrimination varna discrimination caste existed here caste existed without nobility there was no nobility the caste has been emerged without the nobility by the later vedic period marriage became sacred bond marriage it became sacred bond if once got married both should live life long that became marriage marriages were happened marriages were practiced on the gotra a new word gotra emerged gotra first time mentioned in the satapata brahmana Satapata Brahmana first time mentioned Gotra. What is Gotra? Gotra is a cow pen. It was a family order. Based on the Gotra marriages would be happened. Uh, that means so, same Gotra people. Swagotra people. Same Gotra people will not go to the marriage. Uh, different Gotra people will go to the marriage. That is what called as Gotra Yendogami and Gotra Yaksogami. endogamy same gotra people not accepted gotra exogamy exogamy other than the gotra that means uh, outside the gotra other gotra people will go to the marriage that's why in the ancient period boys and girls they are ha- they have the habit of going to the temple temples are facebooks and temples are uh, centers of that period because if you go to the temple at the time of the archana at the time of the archana priest would give every information of you your parents name your father name your gotra name yanta the everything will express in front of you this system existed because of knowing gotra if boy knows the gotra of the girl if it is different will proceed otherwise will go to the putting a namaskar to the god and coming back the temple kelli akkada gotram ane telustundi temples anevi appatlo manam gotram telusukodaniki mana puttu purvotralu telusukodaniki mana bio data telusukodaniki oka place anamata archana icche time lo ఈ ప్రీస్ట్ పూజార్ ఎవరైతే ఉన్నారో వాళ్ళు మొత్తం చెప్పేస్తారు అక్కడ తెలిసిపోతుంది లైక్ దట్ దట్ హ్యాపెండ్ ఎండోగమి గోత్ర ఎండోగమి ఈజ్ నాట్ యాక్సెప్టెడ్ గోత్ర ఎక్సోగమి ఈజ్ నాట్ ఈజ్ యాక్సెప్టెడ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ గోత్ర బేస్డ్ ఆన్ ద గోత్ర అండ్ గోత్ర ఫస్ట్ టైం మెన్షన్ ఇన్ ద శతపథ బ్రాహ్మణ అండ్ ఆల్సో కమింగ్ టు ద పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ ది వేద అధర్వ వేద బికాస్ 
සතපත බ්‍රාහ්මණ බිලංශ අදරව වේට next to after this coming to the point of the other type of the marriages anuloma marriage practice of anuloma and practice of pratiloma marriages were existed practice of anuloma marriages practice of pratiloma marriages were also act, act, uh, existed of that period anuloma higher varna to the lower varna higher varna man higher varna man versus lower varna woman take an example brahman man married brahman man married vaisya woman vaisya woman a marriage between the brahman man and vaisya woman so because of these two a mixed family would be existed that is hybrid family will be existed the product a new product in the society is called as a, this caste is called as asastha caste asastha brahman man with vaisya woman ye children were called as asastha that caste is called as asastha along with this uh, brahmana man versus sudra woman if marriage occurred between these two marriage that means by that time living together this is also anuloma marriage brahmana man versus sudra woman this family is called as nishadas this intercaste family name is called as nishadas this hybrid family is called as nishada like that there are some examples higher to lower lower to higher now coming to the point of the pratiloma marriage pratiloma anuloma marriage was very common pratiloma marriage was not very common it is a rare low, lower woman lower man lower varna man versus higher varna woman this type of the marriage is called as pratiloma marriage take an example sudra man or kshatriya man and brahmana woman kshatriya man versus brahmana woman this family is called as suta suta family and another uh, existence like vaisya man versus kshatriya uh, woman vaisya man versus kshatriya woman these were called as magadhas magadhas sudra man versus brahmana woman this family is called as panchama chandala chandala family but sutas were accepted in the society magadhas were accepted in the society chandalas were not allowed to the society they should live outside the village they should live outside the village chandala from this chandala existed untouchability these became untouchables who were the untouchables untouchables were the born to the brahmana woman with sudra man so like that oh, untouchables were existed so this is what this is how the families this is how the caste system is going to be exist existed based on the brahmana kshatriya vaisya sudra they recorded permutations and combinations among these people brahmana kshatriya brahmana vaisya brahmana sudra 
like that uh, permutations and combinations were existed different caste were existed different caste were started in the society so caste system originated like this from the varna caste system originated from the varna system there occurs different sub caste different sub caste major caste are four only they are brahmana kshatriya vaisya sudra in this society later period society according to the adharva veda the first time gotra mentioned in the adharva veda and also eight types of the marriages were also existed in the adharva veda mentioned in the adharva veda later vedic period existed eight types of marriages one is the first one is brahma marriage brahma vivaha this is what called as brahma vivaha in this vivaha boy and girl both belongs to the same caste boy and girl belongs to the same caste marriage with a dowry marriage with dowry that means so the marriage performed with the basics of the shastras shastras will also involved in this marriage girl father would give some gifts to the boy or boy family like uh, they used to send some cows and they used to some send some household articles this was voluntary of that period originally this was voluntary of that period this voluntary thing later period became compulsory that became dowry dowry system existed from the brahma type of the marriage second type of the marriage was daiva vivaha daiva vivaha in this daiva vivaha exclusively for the priestly class this daiva vivaha exclusively for the priestly class if householder called one priest for the performance of the yagna in his house in the lieu of giving in the lieu of giving fees for the yagna performance of the yagna to the brahman or to the priest he would give his daughter to the priest giving daughter to the sacrificial priest is called as daiva vivaha it is only among the priestly class that is daiva vivaha and uh, third one is arsa type of the marriage arsa type of the marriage this arsa type of the marriage marriage from in which the bridegroom presents or bridegroom presents a cow or bull to the guardian of the girl giving some cow or bull to the guardian of the girl guardian or father to the girl that is what called as bride price this is also called as bride price means kanya sulkam kanya sulkam existed from the arsa type of the marriage boy would give to the girl father or girl guardian fourth one is prajapatya marriage this type of the prajapatya marriage no dowry no bride price marriage of a girl without dowry and without demanding bride price no bride price no dowry most of these marriages will be in the what is that exchange offer like oh, what called as a changing girl girl and boy is there in that family and one girl and boy is there in that family that girl would come to this family this girl will go to that family exchanging that is what called as kunda marpidi these are the four, first four types of the marriages fifth type of the marriage is gandharva type of marriage this gandharva type of the marriage marriage of willing man and woman oftenly clandestine this marriage is oftenly clandestine that means a secret marriage 
it was a secret marriage we can compare this into the latest to love marriage gandharva type of the marriage first looks exchange in lat latter period rings would be exchanged abhignana sakuntala gives much information about the gandharva type of the marriage sakuntala and dushyantala dushyanta sakuntala these two got married that is gandharva type of the marriage uh, dushyanta gave a ring to the sakuntala sakuntala lost that and she felt many difficulties she faced many difficulties because uh, she lost her uh, original form finally her son bharata rescued her life to recognize her father sorry to recognize his father like uh, there was a story abhignana sakuntalam best example of the gandhara vivaha after this uh, sixth type of the vivaha asura asura vivaha in this asura vivaha marriage by purchasing a girl without considering the interest of the girl here there is no interest of the girl girl will be purchased by some other person for the getting marriage those who have authority over the girl the person who is purchasing he will get authority over the girl that was asura type of the marriage seventh one is rakshasa type of the marriage rakshasa type of marriage in this marriage marriage of this capturing a girl and getting marriage forceful marriage capturing a girl and getting the marriage forcefully the last type of the marriage is the paisacha type of the marriage in this paisacha vivaha marriage by abducting the girl marriage by abducting the girl while she was in not in her full sense she was in the half sense that means uh, giving a small dose of the small dose of the drowsiness to the girl and getting the marriage while girl was in the half sense she was not in the full sense that was called as paisacha type of the marriage like that there are they these eight types of the marriages were mentioned in the adharva veda based on the adharva veda we are knowing there occurred there existed eight types of the marriages first four marriages were accepted by the society last four marriages were not accepted by the society these four were not accepted by the society so like this uh, there are eight forms of the marriages so after this marriages getting the marriages caste system became very strong of this period caste system became very strong of that period there is no chance to change the caste changing caste is not a usual thing changing caste is unusual sudras had no right to appear the sacred five they should not appear to the sacred five they should not perform any sacrifices and they are not eligible for the wearing sacred thread here dvija concept also existed what is dvija the status of dvija is twice born only the people those who are eligible to wear sacred thread they were called as dvijas sacred thread that is yagnopavita sacred thread yagnopavita wearing the sacred thread that is yagnopavita yagnopavita is eligible only for the brahmana kshatriya vaisya people there are the, sometimes vaishyas also not accepted in the sudra family there was only one there was only one section of the people only one occupational people they got the wearing the sacred that they were the charioteers chariot makers only chariot makers they have the 
eligibility of wearing sacred thread in the sudras community because of that period oh, sudras in the sudra family weavers were more weavers are very more of that family in the society the more section of the people were the weavers <coughs> chariot makers they got the position of the sacred thread wearing the sacred thread so after this in the coming to the point of the position of women in later vedic society the position of women in the later vedic society slowly started the change of the position of women change of the position of the women the position of women slowly started to worse lost the right to the upanayana ceremony they lost the right of the upanayana ceremony originally there were 40 ceremonies or 40 40 or 42 ceremonies in the life of the human kind the life of human kind starts from womb ends with tomb the life between womb to tomb there are some different ceremonies originally 40 to 40 42 ceremonies are mentioned in the vedas but we are going to perform 18 out of these 18 ceremonies samskaras 18 samskaras astadasa samskaras in that 18 samskaras the most important thing is upanayana ceremony what is upanayana ceremony boy would come a student here boy would come a student that is what called as upanayana ceremony earlier women also got this right but later period women lost this upanayana ceremony not allowed to the education that's why they did not allow to the education women were not allowed to the education parda system has been existed what is parda system but the system means uh, should not appear to the other male they should not appear, appear to the other male that means if any other male enter into the house female would go to the either kitchen room or separate bedroom that is what called as for the system they won't sit in front of any on what is that other than the family male if any other than the family male would come to the house they will go from that place that is what called as parda system for this parda system started during the time of the later vedic period women also are not allowed to the political system political assemblies they did not allow to the political assemblies and both girl child regarded as a here the birth of the girl child regarded as source of sorrow Every family, they thought that the birth of the girl child regarded as a source of misery. She was a cause for the all miseries in the family. That's why people, they are going to the birth of always a son. They like the son's birth. And a girl should not have any property, could not own any property. Gender do. Uh, the what is that to uh, eluded from the property right after the existence of the parda system they limited to only kitchen they limited to the only kitchen restricted to the kitchen and since from the time of the latter vedic period women consider as a private property of a male women became subordinate to the male women became subordinate to the male private property they are treating as a private property this woman belongs to me so nobody should look at and nobody should do, talk with her like that they started some restrictions in that restrictions so woman was living that is what called as the position of the woman since from the latter vedic period in the latter vedic period no widow remarriage accepted 
Sati system started, Sati comes to the reality. <coughs> Video system continued. Video system existed of this period. Video should live a corner of the house. They put aside for all the works. Widows put aside for the all the works. Widow system was very, very, very hard to follow since from the Vedic time. Yeah, this is about the society of early Vedic period and also society of the latter Vedic period. Now, we understood by comparing society, whenever we are going to come, uh, whenever we are going to understand the society of the Rig Vedic period, definitely we should understand the society of the latter Vedic period. Because uh, in the latter Vedic period, untouchability started, there is no untouchability in the early Vedic period. Caste system started in the latter Vedic period, there is no caste system in the early Vedic period, Rig Vedic period. Sati was not there, Sati existed here. Uh, dowry was not there, dowry existed here. Uh, next to widow system was not there, widow system existed here. Child marriages were not there in the Rig Vedic society, but uh, child marriages are there in the latter Vedic period. So, like that, we can compare both the systems. And this is about the society. In the next uh, video, we are going to discuss the economy of the early Vedic period and the later Vedic period, political system of the early Vedic period and the later Vedic period. This we will discuss in the next video. Okay? Good luck.